This video will cover the topic domain and range from the graph of a continuous function. In these problems, we'll be given a graph and asked to write the domain and range of the function using interval notation. Domain and range sounds familiar, but can we go over what those mean really quick? The domain is the set of all numbers that appear as x-coordinates of points on the graph. And the range is the set of all the numbers that appear as y-coordinates of points on the graph. And what about interval notation? In interval notation, we use a bracket to indicate that the endpoint is included in the set of numbers, and we use a parentheses to indicate that the endpoint is not included in the set of numbers. Relating this concept to the graphs that will be given to us in these problems, We'll use a bracket when the endpoint is a filled-in circle, and we'll use a parentheses when an endpoint is an open circle. Let's take a look at an example problem to get an idea of how we'll use interval notation to denote domain and range. We want to find the domain and range of the function shown. Let's first determine the domain. Since domain deals with x values, which corresponds to the x-axis, we want to examine the function from left to right. We see that the leftmost x-coordinate is negative 2, and that the endpoint is a filled-in circle. This means we'll use a bracket to indicate the smallest value in our domain. The rightmost x-coordinate is 3, however, this endpoint is an open circle. This means that the x-coordinate 3 is not actually included in the domain, but the x-coordinates get infinitely close to 3 without ever being 3. This tells us we'll use a parentheses in our notation. Between the x-coordinates negative 2 and 3, there are no other holes or breaks in the function, which tells us that the domain includes all values greater than or equal to negative 2 and less than 3. We write this in interval notation as open bracket negative 2 comma 3 close parentheses. Now let's determine the range. Since range deals with y values, which corresponds to the y-axis, we now want to examine the graph from bottom to top. We see that the bottommost y-coordinate is negative 5, and the endpoint is a filled-in circle. This means we'll use a bracket to indicate the smallest value in our range. The topmost y-coordinate is 4, however, this endpoint is an open circle. This means that the y-coordinate 4 is not actually included in the range, but the y-coordinates get infinitely close to 4 without ever being 4. This tells us we'll use a parentheses in our notation. Between the y-coordinates negative 5 and 4, there are no holes or breaks in the function, which means that the range includes all values greater than or equal to negative 5 and less than 4. We write this in interval notation as open bracket, negative 5, comma 4, close parentheses. Let's take a look at another example. How do you think we should go about finding the domain and range of this function? If we start with the domain, we need to look at the x values included in the function. The x value furthest to the left is negative 5, and the x value furthest to the right is 3 but that endpoint is an open circle, so the x values actually just get really close to 3 without ever reaching 3. So our domain in interval notation would be negative 5 comma 3 not including 3. Then to find the range, we need to look at the y values included in the function. The lowest y value is negative 4, but that's the open circle endpoint so the y values actually just get really close to negative 4 without ever reaching negative 4. The highest y value is 4, which is included because that endpoint is filled in. So our range in the interval notation would be negative 4, comma 4, not including negative 4. Great work! Okay, so determine the domain and range from the graph of a continuous function we need to assess all the x-coordinates and all the y-coordinates included in the function. When writing domain and range in interval notation, we use a bracket to indicate that an endpoint is included in the set of numbers, and we use a parentheses to indicate that an endpoint is not included in the set of numbers. That sounds great. You're really getting the hang of this topic. 